Good morning and welcome to the Unearthed YouTube channel once again. Thanks for being with us. Uh, you may find this film of interest if you are interested in easy switch on and go intro metal detectors made in the UK. So today we've got the C-Scope CS1MX to test. Uh, we'll have a look at the features, which are very few, and we'll pose the question, is this detector actually any good? So let's see. So here we have the C-Scope CS1MX made in the UK. Nice to see a UK made metal detector and it's a very, very simplistic detector. Look at that control panel, it tells you everything about simplicity. Um, we're going to test it on the unearthed test bed very soon. But I'm just going to talk you through very briefly uh, this machine and its features. So you've got the on button, which is there on the left hand side. You've got the red zone, which is telling you that it's, it's actually turned on but that red zone means you know you're not going to get a great deal of depth until you start cranking this machine up clockwise now what's interesting about this you can go into the white zone which is pretty much a favorable zone to search but when you get into the green zone the threshold of this detector will automatically kick in um, now I'm not a real lover of threshold so what I always do with the threshold of a detector is just back it off slightly uh, and you, you can go right round to the red. You can hear that threshold kicking in. Usually it kicks in a little bit earlier than that. So we can probably get away with just having it on the outside of that green zone or just on the inside of the green zone, depending on what search conditions you're faced with. Now, um, the opposite side on the right hand side here is the discrim mode. So you've got the green zone, which is probably the favorable one. Um, I would probably set this on general search conditions around about three the higher you go the more discrimination this machine kicks in but you will get quite a bit of depth lost the higher you go on the discrimination settings you can also have it in the sort of red zone where you're going to be digging nails uh, and everything desirable and non-desirable so if you can have it in just in that little green zone that c-scope set for us uh, it's pretty much easy street now it comes with a waterproof polo coil as you can see uh, I like those for pinpointing I uh, you can I used to use these um, type of coils way back in the early to late 1980s believe it or not on the on the C, uh, sorry on the Tesoro um, machines the Golden Sabre had similar ones Royal Sabre if you remember those these polo coils are very good they're very accurate they're very lightweight and they're really good for um, coin shooting and that sort of thing now the coil cable, as you can see, is um, wound up all the way to the control box and it's set into the control box. You can't take that out, it's a set piece. So when you build this machine, which took me 30 seconds, you can just wind it round and round the shaft as neat as you want to get it. Uh, and then you can just tighten the cam lock up there. Very, very simplistic, very, very straightforward. Every, this machine's almost built from the box. So let's go and give it a shot on the test bed and just see how good this machine is. So here we are on the unearthed test bed and just let me um, show you what the settings are that we're going to be using this CS1MX. Uh, we've got the sensitivity around in the just bordering the green zone. If we have it any higher, the that threshold kicks in as you can hear. So we're just going to back that off just a touch. I don't like too much threshold, I don't like the uh, distraction that it gives me, so that's good news. We can keep it in that sort of three-quarter level on the on the, on the the sensitivity. Discrim-wise, we'll have it sort of round about the four mark in the in the green zone, as they call it. And let's give it a go. Um, it does take one 9-volt battery that's just slotted in the side, just underneath there, sorry. And it's pretty much switch on and go. So let's see how it gets on. It's very, very lightweight, folks. Uh, the first thing I've noticed when I've picked this machine up, it's probably hovering around that two, two and a half pound mark, and it is operating at 17 kilohertz. Now, a lot of manufacturers of metal detectors love that 17 kilohertz because it's that happy medium between sort of highly sensitive, uh, depth kicks in and responsive and everything else that kicks in with detectors. And this is operating, as I said, 17 kilohertz, so pretty damn good. Let's give it a go. 
First off, very sweet. Big copper coin there, it's not having a problem with that, we're just going to have to move this way a bit because we're just getting a little bit of EMI off the caravan that's behind me. My dad parks his caravan on the owner of test bed, folks. There you go. That's gratitude for you. Um, so, just remember, there's no VDI numbers on the screen. It is pretty much all tones with this machine. Raw, performance, all built around the tones. Look at that. Copper coin, not a problem. Down about six, seven inches maximum. Not a problem, not a problem. Let's get on to the test bed and away from this. Just, let me just adjust that back a bit. I'm going to show you what I'm doing. Just going to back that sensitivity off a little bit. We have got power lines over overhead, as we can see. So we don't want to be making uh, a meal of that game. Uh, but I have to say, it's pretty, st pretty stable, actually. And we have another coin, silver sixpence, Victoria, down about four or five inch. Can work that signal up. Not a problem. Do you know what this machine reminds me of? Look at that. Bang, it's hitting the targets. Every target we're going over, it's hitting it hard, which is really encouraging. It reminds me of the old days where before the you know the emergence of EMR, uh, sorry, VDI machines uh, came onto the market and it would just switch on and go with performance straight away. The old polo coils on all tones we used to find shed loads of stuff it give you a, a low grunt or it would just wipe it out continuously discrimination wise or if there was anything under the ground that was potentially desirable it used to just hit it bang and this is what this reminds me of just such a good detector roman coin this time now the roman coin is down slightly deeper and it's not giving a, a louder, it's not giving a loud um, response. It's a sort of a medium tone and a shorter tone. So that's interesting. Uh, maybe four inch. Copper coin forks this time. Just so, do you know what? It's just so simplistic to use. Very, very straightforward and simple. Very, very straightforward. Now, I do apologise, folks, for the um, the amount of thistles that are on here. And the reason is I've not had a chance to mow it because I've been that busy with different things. Uh, but I will get the sheep on it at some point soon. They're off on another pasture field, chewing that down. Look at that. Copper coin again. Well, we'll go and see if we can get the uh, gold ring with a split in it. I know exactly where that is because we're in the line of it now. So we should be picking that up very soon. And there she is. As you can see, it's a tight, nice, crisp target, two-tone. Beautiful. Nine carat gold ring split, down about five inch. Not a problem for this little C-scope. Uh, very impressed with this, folks. Uh, you're going to ask the question, would I use this? Um, would I use this on my sites uh, if I didn't have my main machine? And the answer is absolutely 100%. I would be using this. I would have no... Uh, qualms about using this detector because I know it'd find me stuff. It's just pure performance, switch on and go, no VDI numbers, no electromagnetic interference, just bang. If there's a target there, this machine will hit it. Now, here's the thing. Come August, which is next month, when the Roman sites start getting um, uncovered, and I do apologise for that howling in the background because we've got dog kennels nearby and they've got uh, a poor dog setting its kennels, howling its head off. Uh, while well, its owners are probably lying on a beach somewhere. Um, going back to it, I may use this on some of the sites when they come available. Put the mine labs away, yeah, and just use the C scope all day and see how I get on. Wouldn't that be interesting? I'll get Gaz using my Equinox 900, possibly, or the Manta car or whatever, and I'll just get out in the fields with the little C scope CS1 MX and just see how I get on. I'm up for that. I am absolutely up for that. It's what you see, it's what you get with this machine. It's very, very, very crisp. Um, you can imagine if you've got a friend that's never detected before and you stuck this in there, his or her hand, you turned it on, you set the settings and said, away you go. They would have some real fun with this machine. 
and they probably would find quite a lot of gear with it as well. It's that simple. That's breaking up a bit, so it's telling me that's it's iron. Just giving the odd bleep here and there, so we ignore that and walk on. Another target hitting. Not a problem. Just nice. Just a nice machine to use. Easy, lightweight, crisp. Performance is there. What, what more could you ask for for, the, for that uh, at that intro price? Very, very good detector. Very impressed with the C scope. Look at that. Silver sixpence Victoria. Very easy. Four or five inch. Easy. Now what I might do is turn round. Bigger coin this time. Easy. I might go score and see if we can pick up that uh, deep medieval artifact that we've got. We've got a buckle buried down quite deep uh, out here. So let's go and see if we can find it. It's not that, because we're not near the area. That's the same coin as we got before, folks. So I do apologise, going over the same targets. And here she is. Not a problem for the artifact. I mean, it's a big buckle and it's a big artifact, to be fair. Not a problem for it. Not a problem. Right, okay. I've seen enough and I have uh, done enough testing on this machine already to uh, realise that it's a mighty fine detector for its money. Very, very easy to use, very straightforward, very crisp, very precise. I like it a lot. Uh, these are in stock now, folks. We're going to stock these machines from this week. Um, get behind British Manufacturing, a UK-made detector. There's quite a few different models. Have a look if you want. But, yeah, very impressed. As a backup machine or an intro first machine, this machine is very, very good. There you go. Okay, see you soon. Bye for now.